In 2022, Guardian columnist Jonathan Friedland wrote a play which was produced at the Royal Court Theatre. The play was called Jews in Their Own Words. And in the blurb for the play, Jonathan Friedland used the term and a dose of English irony. Um, the, the term was used very knowingly to refer to this. Uh, and in fact, the use of the term English irony became a kind of a shorthand for the entirety of the Labour anti-Semitism crisis narrative. So let's just take a little bit, a little bit of a look at it and see how that came about. In 2018, the Daily Mail, a uh, right-wing mass market newspaper, published a short clip of Jeremy Corbyn speaking at a meeting in 2013, in which Mr Corbyn referred to an event that had occurred recently with the then Palestinian ambassador to the UK, Manuel Hassassian. At that event, Mr. Hassassian had made a comment which was intended to be taken ironically. Um, there were two Zionist activists in the audience who simply did not understand that Mr. Hassassian's comment was to be taken ironically, thought it was to be taken at face value, and came up to Mr. Hassassian after the event and berated him for his comment. Jeremy Corbyn spoke about this event shortly afterwards at, at a meeting and described the actions of these two uh, protesters who had disrupted the meeting with the Palestinian ambassador. And this is what he said. Let's just listen to his words. This is the clip that the Daily Mail published in 2018. Other evening we had a meeting in Parliament uh, in which Manuel made an incredibly powerful and passionate and effective speech about um, the history of Palestine, the rights of the Palestinian people. This was dutifully recorded by the thankfully silent Zionists who were in the audience on that occasion and then came up and berated him afterwards for, for what he had said. They clearly have two problems. One is they don't want to study history and secondly, having lived in this country for a very long time, probably all their lives, they don't understand English irony either. Manuel does understand English irony and uses it very very effectively so I think they need to two lessons which we can perhaps help them with. Uh, it's important to attend to exactly the words that Corbyn used. Let's just look at what those words were. He said this. The Zionists who were present in the audience on that occasion Uh, when the Daily Mail released their clip in 2018, it immediately caused what might be described best as a deluge or a tsunami of condemnation. Condemnation simply rained down on Jeremy Corbyn from all quarters, not just all, uh, pretty much every UK publication of any kind, newspaper, journal, whatever, published a piece condemning Corbyn for these comments but also internationally. He was, com he was, he was um, condemned globally for having allegedly said Jews or Zionists. The two terms were just simply interchangeable, really, for this, for this purpose. Um, didn't understand English irony. And this was considered to be an appalling insult to Jewish people um, and was regarded as othering othering the Jewish people. He was othering them. He was making them different from us. They weren't the same as us. They didn't understand our sense of irony. And this was an appalling insult. And the condemnation was just extraordinary. It was an explosion of hate directed towards Jeremy Corbyn for these comments. There were, there were, two, there were two protesters at the meeting who disrupted the meeting with Manuel Hassassian. And one of them, who is described as a blogger called Richard Millett, was later uh, talked about by Jeremy Corbyn in an Andrew Marr 
television program in September of 2018, in which Corbyn described him as dis dis described the two people who had been at the meeting with Hassassian as disruptive. Disruptive. Uh, Richard Millett um, then took out a libel case against Jeremy Corbyn because he said that although Corbyn had not named him in this Andrew Marr interview, nevertheless he was identifiable as one of the people who had disrupted the meeting with the Palestinian ambassador. Um, he later dropped the case. The case went nowhere. But the point to make there is that Millet, Richard Millet, uh, stated as, uh, the basis of his libel case was that he was identifiable as one of the people Corbyn had talked about at the meeting with the Palestinian ambassador, i.e. Corbyn was talking about individual people, two individual people. The Zionists who are present in the audience on that occasion, not Zionists as a global totality, not all the millions of Zionists that there are in the world, because they were not present in the audience on that occasion. It would be a big audience if they were. He was talking about two people who had disrupted a meeting. One of them was Richard Millet, and Millet identified himself as being one of those two people. So, did Jeremy Corbyn say Zionists or Jews uh, don't understand English irony? Is that claim true or is that claim false? I think the evidence is perfectly clear 